Jean. I wanted to talk with you today briefly about some confusion regarding what day this is. According to my cell phone, and I have my cell phone here, uh, according to my cell phone, it is, what, what day is it here? It is Wednesday, September 4th, and if you are looking at um, some Jewish stuff, rabbinical traditions and literature, and you want to celebrate the feasts of our God, you might be slightly confused because you keep hearing that today is Rosh Hashanah, or that means head of the year. Now, that is kind of interesting because the words Rosh Hashanah or the head of the year do not occur in the biblical text in any biblical text that is a Jewish tradition of the rabbis and it is a flat-out falsehood it is not the head of the year let me read for you um, what is the head of the year or the beginning of the year uh, if you look in Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, and this is repeated in other places, it says that our God, Yehovah, spoke unto Moses and his brother Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall make to them, take to them every man a lamb according to his house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. This is the feast of Passover and the feast of unleavened bread. That is the first of the year, the first month of the year. It is not the seventh month of the year as we have been learning here if you want to look at what is the first of the year you need to look at that that's Passover now what is happening today this evening is not Passover it is not the head of the year it is Yom Teruah or Yom Teruah which is the day of blowing Okay, now you can read about the day of blowing if you go to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23, and I'm just looking that up on eSword on my phone. I'd recommend that you get that if you don't have it already. It's really cool. It says this in, in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23, And Yehovah spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. Okay, so this day, starting at sundown on Wednesday evening and going through Thursday. It's not two days like you're hearing in rabbinical Judaism in the traditions of our forefathers who have handed down lies to us just like our Christian forefathers have. Uh, they're not handing down biblical um, feast days and biblical traditions. They're handing down their own traditions. Okay, so be very careful of this. Now this says that it's a day of memorial of the blowing of trumpets okay so what are we actually memorializing why are we blowing trumpets what does this have to do with and if you want to find that information go back to Exodus okay so now you want to go to Exodus 19 verse I believe it's 18 yes Exodus 19:18. okay? This is when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and went back to Mount Sinai where God told Moses to bring them. And listen to what happened on that day. Okay, it says, And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the, mount, at the base of Mount Sinai. And the Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because Jehovah had descended upon it in fire. 
and smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by a voice. And Jehovah came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and Jehovah called Moses up to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. And that is when God began to instruct the people, and he spoke with his own voice from Mount Sinai. So, what is Yom Teruah? It is the remembrance of this day of the blowing of trumpets. Now, you're going to hear in rabbinical traditions that this is the day that Adam was created. This is the beginning of the first creation of the world. You're going to hear all kinds of weird stuff, okay? Just remember this. It is not Rosh Hashanah. It is not the for head of the year. That would be Passover, as instructed by God to Moses. This is Yom Teruah, the Feast of Remembrance and the blowing of horns, okay? The blowing of the shofar. So, what are in a day of remembrance? What are we remembering? We are remembering that this is the very day that God came down upon the mountain and spoke in his own voice to the people. And you could read some of the Psalms about what happened when God's voice spoke. It was pretty powerful. So if you want to celebrate the feast of Yom Teruah, the day of blowing, this is a day for one to humble oneself and to listen to the voice of your God that is coming from the mountain, okay? This is the day that we remember that God spoke and gave us his commandments, gave us his instructions. This begins the fall feasts of our God. And we have now, from this period until the next one, which is the Day of Atonement, the Ten Days of Awe, in which we are to repent, be on our faces before our God, having heard his voice from the mountain, seeking his forgiveness, seeking his mercy, seeking for him to cover our sins and blot us out. I would also remind you that one day in the future, something else is going to happen with some trumpets blowing, okay? Now, I'm sure you probably can imagine what that is, that our, our, our Messiah, Yeshua, is going to appear at the last trump, okay, at the last trumpet call. If you'll remember in the book of Revelation, there are seven trumpets. When the last trumpet is sounded, our Messiah Yeshua will come back to the earth, he will come back from heaven, okay? Just like the voice of God came from heaven on, on Yom Teruah, Yeshua is going to return from heaven on Yom Teruah. So we are not only on this day of Yom Teruah looking back to when God gave us the commandments on the mountain, we are also looking forward to when Yeshua will come down from the mountain of heaven and return to us, okay? So this is a day of remembrance. It also says that we are to offer up an offering of fire to our God. Now, I don't recommend that you do that because there is no temple and there is no altar in a place where he has placed his name there at this time. So, make an offering by fire? No. Make an offering to our God in some other way? Your, pr your prayers. Hello, sorry about the interruption. So, as I was saying, um, this is the day that we are remembering. This is the day of offering a sacrifice of our prayers, okay? Offer your prayers to your God for yourself, for your family, uh, gifts of prayer to our God in remembering all of the wonderful things that he's done for you, thanking him for bringing you his word, thanking him for bringing you salvation, asking him for mercy, and for forgiveness and to cover over your sins and blot them out and remember you um, not because of your own righteousness but because his name because of his own name I would highly recommend that on a day like today Yom Teruah that you look at Daniel chapter 9 verse 1 okay and I'm gonna read that to you before I go here and this would be my recommendation to you if you are offering up your prayers 
uh, as an offering to our God because I believe that that's the best you're going to do at this day and age as we don't have a temple right now. But here is what happens. In the first year of the reign of uh, Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, Daniel understood by the books uh, the number of years whereon the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of the city of Jerusalem. And he set his face, Daniel did, unto Jehovah his Elohim, his God, to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And he prayed unto his God, Jehovah, and he made his confession. And he said, O Jehovah, the great and dreadful Elohim, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned, and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled even by departing from your precepts and from your judgments. Neither have we listened to your servants, the prophets, which spoke in your name to our kings and our princes and our fathers and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs unto thee, but to us open shame or confusion of face. To the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off throughout all the countries where you have scattered them because of their trespass that they have sinned against you. O Lord, to us belongs confusion of face or open shame to our kings and our princes and our fathers because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God, that is to Jehovah our Elohim, belong mercies and forgiveness though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Jehovah our Elohim to walk in his laws which he set before us by his servants the prophets. Yes, all Israel have transgressed thy covenant, even by departing, that they might not obey your voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of your servant Moses, because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed, that is, Jehovah has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our judges, that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us, yet we did not make our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. It is because of this that Jehovah watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, because Jehovah our Elohim is righteous in all his works which he does, for we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Jehovah our Elohim, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renown, as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let your anger and your fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause your face to shine upon your sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear, open your eyes, and behold our desolations and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O oh Lord, hear, O oh Lord, forgive, O oh Lord, hearken and do, defer not for your own sake, my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. That is the prayer of a righteous man who recognizes that he has not lived up to the expectation set upon him and is asking for forgiveness and mercy and compassion and grace. So on this day of Yom Teruah, remember your God who passed down his commandments from Mount Sinai and remember your God, Yeshua, who is coming back from the mountain of heaven to return to his people and seek his face because we are all in desolation and spread upon the world 
and there is trouble and tribulation coming. Remember the Lord your God on this day and seek his face during the days of awe, that on the day of atonement you might reach atonement or at one mint with your God. And then on the feast of Sukkot, rejoice because you have experienced the restoration of your God. This is Israel Epstein, hopefully clarifying some things and bringing you less confusion in a world of tumult and murkiness and despair. <laughs> Thank you so much, folks. Have a blessed Yom Teruah. Blow the shofar.